Hello and welcome to this educational activity entitled Expert Video Viewpoints on Castration-Resistant Prostate Cancer, Care Across the Continuum. I am Emmanuel Antonarakis, Assistant Professor of Oncology at the Johns Hopkins Sydney Chemo Comprehensive Cancer Center, and I'm joined by Dr. Leonard Gramella, Chairman, Department of Urology, Associate Director of Clinical Affairs, Jefferson Chemo Cancer Center at the Thomas Jefferson University, and Dr. A. Oliver Sartor, the Laborde and Dowd Professor of Cancer Research at the Tulane University School of Medicine. We'll now begin Section 3 and talk about some of the novel and emerging therapies which are in development for castration-resistant prostate cancer. And I'd like to ask Dr. Sartor just to summarize the current Phase 3 studies looking at novel agents in this setting. Gosh, that's actually a big question, and we don't really have the opportunity to discuss each in turn. I'm going to refer people to the table. This might highlight that there are a variety of immunotherapies that are now being, being tested, uh, ipilimumab, we have the uh, Prospect VF Tricom, uh, a novel agent which bears looking into in a little more detail. We have Dasatinib, we have new results with Radium 223, new provocative agent, uh, Gebazatinib. TAC 700 has gone into some trials. We hope to hear about the NDV 3100 pretty soon. And then a new one called Tesquinamod. So, a whole range of new agents are now in phase three. And as we move forward, I think we'll have to pay attention to all of them, to be honest with you. I'd first like to touch back upon abiraterone. We heard about the post-chemotherapy study. I'd like Dr. Gomelo to talk about the pre-chemotherapy phase three trial with this agent. The abiraterone trial, known as the Cougar 302 trial, has completed the accrual. And basically, this looked at abiraterone and prednisone versus uh, placebo and prednisone in a one-to-one -one randomization. And this is in the pre-chemotherapy space. So while 301, which led to the approval, was post-chemotherapy, this will study abiraterone before chemotherapy. And I'd like to also talk about a novel agent that actually works a little bit differently from abiraterone. It's called MDV3100. Dr. Sarasota, can you tell us about this mechanism of action? Sure. So this really binds to the androgen receptor. It's an anti-androgen, but it binds tighter than the older agents such as baclutamide or flutamide. So this, this agent has no partial agonism, which some of the other agents have potentially been shown to have. And in addition, it also blocks the translocation of the androgen receptor into the nucleus after the binding of the AR. So what we have here is probably a better anti-androgen. Now, in the development process, at higher doses, there were found to be some seizures. So in the phase three trial design, they backed off and used a little lower dose, but one that is unequivocally active. And this has now shown some pretty remarkable results, actually, in both the pre-dostaxel and post-dostaxel setting. A lot of PSA responses, but really the question is, is it going to work in the phase three? And the phase three trial design, as it turns out, one post is completed accrual, one pre is still accruing, and overall survival are going to be, of course, the ultimate test here. So I'll just stop you right there, and I'll ask Dr. Gomella just to go in a bit more detail. The AFFIRM study, which is the post-chemotherapy MDV3100 trial, can you discuss that with us? Yeah, the AFFIRM, the AFFIRM trial is in the post-chemotherapy setting with MDV3100. The accrual of this is already complete, so we're anxiously re re uh, awaiting the results. It was almost 1,200 patients, and it looked at MDV3100, versus placebo in the post-chemotherapy setting. And there's also a very similar trial actually in the pre-chemotherapy setting uh, entitled PREVAIL. Can you talk about that as well? Correct. That's a slightly larger trial of about 1,700 patients that's going to look at MDV3100 versus placebo in the setting of the pre-chemotherapy, much like the other agents are all being moved up earlier in the course of treatment. Yeah, and for me, this is a very exciting time. We have a lot of new hormonal agents. In the past, mm -hmm. we thought we had sort of gone as far as we could with these agents, and now all of a sudden we have three, four, five new agents. I'd like to ask Dr. Sarathor to just talk about some of these other agents which are currently in phase one, phase two, soon to be in phase three, uh, targeting the androgen axis. Sure. Well, as it turns out, there's another agent called TAC-700, it's a CYP-17 inhibitor, and it also showed very promising preliminary sort of phase one, phase two results, and was jumped immediately into phase three, again, post-dosotaxel, pre-dosotaxel. There's a new agent called uh, TUG-001, and it has a multiplicity of actions. It, it appears to have some CYP17 inhibition, but it may also alter the androgen receptor. It may actually lead to a little downregulation of the androgen receptor. So there's phase two studies there, not in phase three yet. And then a brand new one called ARN509, and this is a, another androgen receptor antagonist, sort of like NDV3100, but uh, some of the folks think it might even be better, so it's now undergoing preliminary testing. 
And I'll shift gears now and talk about some of the novel immunotherapies. We've already heard about Cipulus OT. And there's an interesting phase three study which is just about to start. I'd like Dr. Gamal just to talk about this study with Cipulus OT. So what's happening is the immunotherapies are being moved up earlier in the course of disease. This phase three study will be primarily done in Europe and it's going to look at patients with hormone naive metastatic prostate cancer and it's going to randomize them to androgen deprivation therapy alone or an induction course of cipulucyl T and androgen deprivation therapy together. Thank you. You know, another agent that we've heard a lot about, ipilimumab, actually just FDA approved for another d disease, metastatic melanoma, also being tested in prostate cancer. Can you describe the mechanism of action of ipilimumab? Very interesting. What the ipilimumab does is it uh, takes the break off the immune response. So the uh, CTLA-4, which is a break on the T cell response, is taken off by the ipilimumab, allowing a more robust T cell response and anti, hopefully anti-tumor effect. And there's been a number of interesting phase one, phase two studies with this agent leading to the phase three trials. But Dr. Sartor, can you summarize the early phase stu studies with ipilimumab in prostate patients? Ipilimumab has been tested in the phase one and phase two setting, and we know now that it's unequivocally active in metastatic melanoma. These trials in prostate cancer you know, did not really have a specific antigen that was targeted. It was just taking the brakes off the immune system. But unequivocally, there have been responses. In fact, some response has been very robust. They did trials both with radiation and without radiation. Using radiation may actually help to present the antigens. And the results were promising enough that this agent has moved into phase three now. Yeah, and one of the things that kind of sticks in my mind is that this agent is different from the other immunotherapies like Cipulus LT. It actually does produce some PSA responses. It actually does cause some tumor regressions. Mm -hmm. And this is something we, we didn't actually see with Cipulus LT. We haven't seen with Prosvac or other agents. So to me, th this is probably working in a slightly different mechanism. But as you said, it, there's been a lot of interest in developing this in the phase three setting. And there's actually two phase three studies, very similar to designs. Could you talk about those studies with ipilimumab in the phase three setting? Sure. Well, one of them is going to be in the post-chemo setting, and you know I talked earlier about the docetaxel being a pivot point, and that's a perfect example. So this post-docetaxel trial will be utilizing radiation, hopefully to perhaps help the antigen presentation, and then either using IPI or the placebo with an overall survival endpoint. In addition, there's going to be a pre-chemotherapy setting, and again, placebo will be used as the um, control group and overall survival will be the primary objective. I now want to talk about another immunotherapy agent, vaccine therapy, called PROSTVAC. Um, Dr. Gomela, can you talk about how this agent works? PROSTVAC is, uh, is really exciting. Basically, it's going to rely on a uh, injection into the patient to stimulate their immune system using essentially a, a phalpox virus and a vaccinia virus. It's also combined with uh, adjuvants that stimulate the immune system, and it's a very exciting uh, way for the future to treat prostate cancer through direct injection and stimulating the patient's own immune system through these phalpox and vaccinia virus vectors. Yeah, and I first heard about this when the phase two trial was presented by Dr. Kantoff. Um, could you please summarize first, Dr. Sartor, the phase two trial with PROSVAC and, uh, and what the results were? Sure. So the PROSVAC trial was conducted in the asymptomatic metastatic castrate resistant space. And patients were either given an empty vector or they were given the, the PROSVAC. And after progression, there was an opportunity to cross over and receive the active agent if initially you were in the placebo arm. The primary endpoint was actually progression, but as it turned out, they followed the patients for a long time and survival was also obtained. And the interesting result was survival was positive in the randomized phase two. And I think this has actually led to a lot of excitement and this drug has now moved into phase three. Mm -hmm. And there's actually a huge study which is about to launch. Um, Dr. Gomella, can you talk to us about the uh, PROSTPEC trial? Yeah, the, the uh, PROSVAC VF trial or the PROSPECT trials, it's known, is going to have three arms to it. One is going to use the PROSVAC VF with the GMCSF. The other is going to just use the PROSVAC uh, VF alone. And the last is going to be strictly the placebo vector injection. We're expecting this study to launch in about November of 2011. And now I want to shift gears once again to talk about new bone-targeted agents. Um, and you know, traditionally, we've, we've had, a, as we mentioned, zoledronic acid. We've also had a class of agents called the radiopharmaceuticals. And the agents in this class include strontium-89 as well as, as well as samarium-153. Now, those agents actually were emitting beta waves, so beta radiation. 
And now there's a new agent, radium-223, which is different from the, the classic agents, and it's an alpha emitter. It emits a shorter wavelength of energy. And now this agent, radium-223, has gone into the phase three trials. And I'd like Dr. Sartor just to talk about um, the, the phase three pivotal trial with radium-223 and perhaps some of the early results. Well, it's a uh, it's very provocative agent. It's an uh, alpha particle, and there's, there's never been an approved alpha particle before. An alpha particle has got two protons, two neutrons. It's a big particle. It carries a lot of energy. These beta particles are really sort of electron-type size, so this is like 7,000 times bigger, and it has a huge amount more energy. So after a randomized phase two showed a survival benefit, and of course that's not definitive. You've got to take it into phase three. There was a series of, uh, of additional trials, by the way, that showed some relief in symptomatic disease, but it went into the phase three, and the phase three was called the Alsimka trial. It occurred over 900 patients, and it was done for metastatic patients who were symptomatic, and many, in fact, most of them had had prior docetaxel, and the randomization was either to a placebo or six doses of the radium-223, and the primary endpoint was overall survival. And the amazing sort of thing is, is that uh, sort of recapitulating what happened with the abiraterone, the data monitoring committee actually stopped the trial early at an interim endpoint, pre predetermined interim endpoint. But the overall survival was so positive that they felt like that they had to stop the trial and allow the patients on the placebo arm to receive the active drug. So this is going to be presented at the ESMO meeting in Europe uh, for the first time in September of 2011. And then, of course, we anticipate regulatory submissions to follow uh, relatively shortly thereafter. Yeah, that sounds very exciting to me. And another agent which really caught my interest, uh, which I heard about in ASCO 2011, is a new uh, TKI tyrosine kinase inhibitor called cabozantinib, or XL184. Can you talk to us a little bit about this agent and sort of where it's going and what results we've seen with it so far? Sure. So, again, a very uh, provocative new agent. Uh, it really inhibits a new target in terms of metastatic tissue-resistant prostate cancer. It hits two of the receptors fairly effectively. One of them is called the CMET receptor, and CMET is overexpressed in a number of patients with metastatic, particularly bone metastatic cancer resistant prostate cancer. And it also hits VEGF R2, our old friend VEGF, and this is the receptor type 2. And this interaction appears to be particularly effective in animal models. So going into the humans, it was rather amazing, actually, that we saw for the first time bone scan responses. So we've gotten accustomed to looking at bone scans and realizing they can get worse but not better. The preliminary results here show unequivocally that a substantial number of patients can actually have bone scan responses. In addition, there's other evidence of activity in the soft tissue. So this is an agent we're trying to learn a lot more about quickly, and it's in phase two right now. It hasn't gone to phase three yet. Just summarizing with some key takeaway messages now, um, we have several novel androgen-directed therapies. Some of them actually affect androgen biosynthesis, like the TOKI compound, the TAC700 compound. Other agents are actually affecting the androgen receptor in a more potent fashion than bicalutamide. Some of these agents are MDV3100, ARN509, currently in phase one slash two studies. We've also heard about some novel immunotherapies, which are currently in phase three uh, studies, ipilimumab, two large phase three studies, as well as PROSTVAC, a pivotal phase three study going to be opening in November 2011. In addition, we've heard about a fifth drug that might be improving overall survival for patients with prostate cancer, radium-223. Um, and once again, cabozantinib or XL184, a novel TKI uh, blocking CMET and VEGFR2 with sort of marked effect on bone metastases, something also to look out for in the future. And this concludes Section 3. <laughs>